Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondence Club of Japan. Uh, my name is Fred Varko, a member of the Professional Activities Committee. Uh, before we start, can I ask you to turn your telephones off or put them on silent mode? Um, as you know, we are having this press conference um, to discuss motor racing. Uh, we have uh, our guest Kimura-san will speak first, followed by Kosolino-san and calderon san uh, As you know, the Kagai team have qualified for the Le Mans race in June in France, which is a, a major achievement for a, a Japanese team. Uh, Kei Kosolino is the driver, Kimura-san is also driver and owner. And uh, we're very honored to have Monica Kaltenborn come and join this press conference and give her insights into motor racing around the world and in Europe. So without any further ado, uh, I would like uh, Kimura-san to make, uh, say a few words. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Takeshi Kimura. Uh, nice to meet you. So I'll be speaking in Japanese. Uh, よくこの青いあの、この幕ですか。あの、Okay. Well, um, well, thank you all for coming in. And I have to speak in Japanese, sorry. But I often see this blue background, and I associate this blue with this international uh, things that are happening, something important, and I'm rather nervous that I get to speak here. And uh, again, I would uh, very much would like to thank you for having me today. え、僕たちえ、カーガイはですね、え、4年前にチーム、レーシングチームを結成しまして、え、数々のレースをやってきました。昨年はスーパー え、元々このチームはですね、私がそのスーパーカーとかが大好きで、え、そこから派生していってえ、レースをやり始めたチームでございます。Well, uh, we began uh, because I've always loved supercar and the team has come together with um uh, based on that love. え、昨年ついにその、ま、ドライバーであれば誰でも目標であるルマンというものにターゲットを絞り、アジアンルマンに挑戦しました。And for Le Mans, which is really the dream or the, uh, the top dream for any driver. And I've selected Ferrari as my partner. アジアンルマンに挑戦しました。パートナードライバーはここにいるケイコツリーの選手とフェラリワークスドライバーのジェームズカラード選手でございます。Well, and uh, uh, Ferrari, as I said, has uh, um, chosen us, or uh, we have become partner, and I have purchased Ferrari 488 GT3, and we are a purely private team, and the drivers will be myself, and Kay, who is sitting right next to me, and James Culler, who is from Ferrari. え、開幕の上海、そして富士、え、で、え、タイ、最後マレーシア戦と4000ございまして、え、私どもは幸運にも全線全勝をできました。これはアジアンルマン始まって以来の快挙ということで、え、私どもはチームとしての、え、
MVP、そして私はルーキードライバーとして MVP を取れて、晴れてルマンに参戦となりました。And we have、uh, participated in、uh, Shanghai, Fuji, and Thai, Malaysia, all four races associated with Le Mans. And this is the first time who,、uh, the team has,、uh, uh, in Asia and Le Mans, has, one team has won all four races. And、uh, it, ever since the race has begun in Asia. And、uh, the team has been chosen as MVP, and I have been chosen as a rookie driver. えー、おかげさまでルマン、6月に参戦することができましてです、ねえー、晴れて、今日この場に呼ばれお呼ばれされていると思います。えーまあ、ルマンに、えー、初めて臨むわけですけれども、目標はあそうです、ねえーまあ、優勝を正直目指しております。私どもは世界で一番速い、えー、ジェントルマンチームであると思ってます、またフェラーリチームであると思ってますので、優勝を狙いにルマンに行きます。Well,、uh, we will be officially、uh, racing at Le Mans in, in、uh, this June, and this will be, of course, our first Le Mans, and、uh, the challenge is that I have set a goal for ourselves that we are going to become a champion, we're going to win it. And we, I feel that we are, the,、uh, we are and、uh, we will be the fastest team, and that we are the fastest、uh, Ferrari team. Today, we have K. Kotsuri, the first one, the Monisha, the Joshi, 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 いただいている最中です。その辺をお,お二人からですね、えー、お話ししていただければと思います。Okay, well,、uh, myself and Kay Kuzlini, who's next to,、uh, sitting next to me, and Monisha, she's a very famous person in the world, and we are uh, uh, partnering together, and、uh, we are going to, as we、uh, do our、uh, racing activity, We are、uh, right now talking together about our vision of the future. And the, the, these two will be talking to you about this,、uh, our vision that we have set for the future. Thank you. Okay.、Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mia san, konnichiwa. My name is Keiko Tsurino. Surprisingly, I speak、uh, Japanese and English fluently, so I can all translate myself. Since we have a translator, I will. Which do you prefer, Suda san?、Uh, I believe、uh, you used to speak in English, right? <laughs> okay, I will speak in English. I look more you,、uh, Western, so I will、uh, stick to that. And since we are here at the FCCJ, so first of all, thank you for having me here today. It's a very a big honor to be here.、Um, I asked Mr. Fred、uh, if there has ever been a motorsports racing team to do this press conference here, and he said we are the first one. So, Um, well, I am extremely honored and proud, and it feels like we are kind of making history here. So I'm a little bit a jumpy right now. But、um, I would like to explain to you,、uh, apart from all the important details that Mr. Kimura san has explained,、um, the reason why I am here and then why even Ms. Monisha is here also. Okay.、Um, first of all, I'm a racing driver. Um, however, a very particular racing driver. I am also doing the operations on the team. So I'm a team manager and a racing driver. And、um, surprisingly, about last November, until last October, we would have never imagined to be here and to go to Le Mans.、Um, Mr. Kimura was just a, originally a supercar freak. Yeah, he was.、Uh, I don't know if that was the correct word for it, but a, a big supercar maniac. And then he just, you know, he had no knowledge in motorsports. And I met him back in 2017. And、um, he said, I want to race. Let's build a team. Now, this is very particular because usually、uh, teams are built by ex、uh, racing drivers that have maybe 30, 20, 30, 40 plus years of experience. However, Mr. Kimura's Vitality, or how do you say, the energy, the motivation was more than anything I have seen. And he says, if I do racing, I don't want to do it just as a driver, but I want to establish a name as a team owner. 
So in 2017, we built Car Guy from scratch, from zero. And uh, we had to hire people, and I was one of the first ones as a driver. Originally, I was just a driver, but then we realized that we wanted to expand globally last November to do the Asian Le Mans series. So this is where I came in. My bilingual, bilingual uh, skills were finally at, um, how do you say, at use. So I, we started negotiating with Ferrari. And, um, and me being Italian, they really prioritized us. We, we, get, we, got, along, we got along very well from the beginning. And um, they delivered a new car in one week into Shanghai. Now, we were initially in Italy testing the car. And we, were, we had no idea to buy this car. But we drove the car for one lap, and Mr. Kimura said, I'm going to buy it. But the race was going to be in a week. And Ferrari built the car from scratch, and they delivered it into Shanghai. Now, this is the start of this journey. And we believe that Ferrari was, would have been the only manufacturer to have uh, realized these, uh, how do you say, the logistics of it because um, they really care about their customers, their drivers, their teams. And obviously, they are one of the biggest uh, auto manufacturers in the world, so they, they are actually able to uh, accomplish such uh, big uh, missions. So we got into Shanghai. And at first, the first race in Shanghai, we didn't really expect to win it. We just thought we will finish the race and maybe build on, because everything was in a rush. But we were able to win it. And from then on, we kept winning races. And here we are in Le Mans. Now, uh, the team is now going to Le Mans. And in Mr. Kimura-san's mentality now is we want to globally expand our team. But uh, since me, obviously, being half global, uh, I do not have much knowledge into uh, how do you say expanding a team globally. So we are here now with Ms. Uh, Monisha Kaltenborn. We are still in negotiations. And, uh, and we will see how we can expand our team. But we need someone from a big background from Formula One, because Formula One, as you all know, is the biggest racing series. So we, uh, th we uh, are talks, we were in talks with Ms. Monisha Kaltenborn. And we will see what we can do next year. I, at the moment, cannot say where we're, we're going to be in 2020. But this is, in a way, uh, one of our potentials. We never built uh, big long-term goals from the beginning. We usually do a championship. We win it. And if we win it, we're having fun. So we then we go to a step forward. So our main target now is to win Le Mans. Now, that's not going to be easy, obviously. So Le Mans, we're thinking of doing it for the next two, three years. But obviously, our main target is to win. And then uh, we are thinking of expanding uh, into higher series. Now, um, as going back to when I started this team with Mr. Kimura-san, obviously, he had almost zero experience driving on our circuit. So I was his coach in the beginning. And in racing nowadays, there are, uh, how do you say, gentlemen drivers like him, but with a successful business, but very hard to succeed also in racing, because it requires a lot of commitment of time, a lot of money will get involved, and a lot of physicality. Obviously, you need to be fit. But Mr. Kimura was really committed to accomplish all these goals. And he was, more than anyone I've seen, was committed to train and to drive. And he just told me, OK, just make me fast. If you make me fast, we will grow, and we will race in Le Mans. So it's up to you to do this. So I was his personal, in a way, trainer, but driving coach. And then now I'm here as a driver, but also a team manager. So that is it from my side. And yes, thank you very much. OK, thank you, Kay. Uh, next, uh, Monisha Kaltenborn, if you have some words to say about <coughs> Motor, motorsports, please. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today and to be part of the Kargai project. I was very intrigued when I heard about the project, and particularly when Kimura-san was so kind, together with Kay, to give me the details to this project. Of course, what was very clear from the outset is the tremendous passion for motor racing, which you feel when you talk about the project. But what makes it even more fascinating is the background of the team. You have heard how the team was established, the remarkable success they have had, and this paired with the enormous ambition 
of the team. And all this was very intriguing to me to see what can we do here together and how can we take it to the next steps because one thing is, of course, to have these ambitions when they are then coupled with so many other aspects which are equally relevant in motorsport today. You then can create a very solid basis. Of course, the focus is now on this very major event of Le Mans, which is a great history and a historical event. I mean, some of you might know that coming from Sauber, Sauber has a very strong links to the Le Mans event because when Peter Sauber won that event, for him then the next step was to go into Formula One. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go into Formula One after this, but it just tells you what a benchmark, being part of Le Mans, being racing there, and then to achieve your target to win can be in the history of a team. So the ambition is very clear. I'm convinced having spoken to them, seeing what they're doing, that they will achieve, we will achieve this target, and we will then continue to strengthen the basis to take whatever step we are going to take together. Because the secret for success in motorsport lies to have in a good basis and then prudently grow step by step. So that's the reason for me to be here today. And again, I'm very grateful for this opportunity and very excited of entering into this new chapter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the next part of this uh, press conference is questions and answers. Uh, so if anybody has a, a question, please raise your hand and come up to the, the microphone and state your name and if you have one, an affiliation. So does anybody have a question out there? So I'll, I'll start first um, with Kimura-san. How did you uh, team up with uh, K in the beginning? And, and what did you see in K that you wanted to, to use for your team? Uh, <laughs> he was good looking. <laughs> uh, He's got great voice too. Thank you very much. <laughs> 最初彼そこまで速くなかったんですよね。ただ、私のコーチングをしている間にどういうわけだかすごく私が速くなっていったんですよ。But <笑> Okay, well, as far as I know, uh, for 500, I think he's a top three driver in Japan. And uh, I really believe that. And Ferrari uh, people say that he's very fast, too. すごく人の縁であの彼と出会ったとドライバーとしての能力から始まったんではなくまあある友人を通して。well, so uh, what happened is that I met him through human relationship or uh, through friend of a friend. And um, it's not uh, I looked for him or I met him through racing or driving. And I think that's what's important. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, question for Kay. Uh, we first met when you were racing in Formula 3 and Formula Nippon, and now you're racing in sports cars. Uh, can you give us a background as to how, how you have to change your racing style and, and training for that? Um, well, first of all, um, I was born here, yeah? And uh, my father's Italian, my mother's Japanese, and uh, but I race under a Japanese passport. So I'm Japanese. I have a kanji, but K. I think the joke was that you race under a Japanese passport, but you drive like an Italian. That's right. <laughs> so, therefore, um, and originally I was I, I I wanted to have a career in Europe, but I went and, and the beginning that Toyota had a very um, attracting young drivers program, and you pay small money, and if you're fast, 
they take you and they fund you for three, four years of racing. So I was able to race in Formula Nip until Formula Nippon until 2010 with Toyota's fundings, and which I'm really still thankful for. But after well, so with the economic crisis and Lehman shock in 2009, a lot of teams had to uh, put their activities on hold. So that's where I, in a way, lost my seat. Now, obviously, I have to consider even myself, I wasn't able to win that year, so I wasn't able to really perform well. That was one of the reasons also. So I had to quit for four years of racing. And during that time, I decided to work for my father. He's a restaurant chef in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Tokyo. And that's and actually, that's where I learned what business means. Until then, I was just purely racing. And when I came back to sports car, I had a more business mentality. I wanted to get involved more, not just the driving, but on the management side of the team. So my main focus was to grow this team. Now, talking about the driving adaptability, from single-seaters like Manisha's Formula One is much different. The cars are much heavier. They weigh about 1,500 kilograms, when a Formula One car is about 700. So it almost feels like you're driving a bus if you're coming from a single-seater. But you know, the single-seater actually teaches you how to be driving on the limit, because you are two times, three times faster in a single-seater than a GT car. So I was, I was able to adapt easily. Now, physically-wise, physical-wise, GT car is not as tiring as a single-seater, because you have less g-force, because you're going slower in the corner. But the main problem is it's really hot in there. So nowadays the cars have air conditioning, but it's not like the air conditioning you have on a normal car. So it's still hot, you sweat a lot, and um, that's where you have to be strong. Yeah. And then the races in GT cars are extremely long. There are two hours. What we were doing, we were doing four hour races. We did four of those, but next one is Le Mans 24. And we say one stint, a driving time of one driver is about an hour and a half. In Le Mans, it's going to be 50 minutes because the, the fuel tank regulations are, strict, uh, are smaller. So you can only do maximum 50 minutes. But in Asian Le Mans, you, you can, a full tank of 120 liters is about a stint of one hour 30 minutes, one hour 45. So that's and then we race in Thailand and Malaysia and all that. So I, I yeah I went I go a lot to the sauna to, <laughs> to to really get used to the heat before races. But the dehydration is immense. So I, I was going to say that maybe racing for 24 hours and, and trying to get some rest and 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 then driving again was going to be difficult. But I, I understand you just had a, a baby. Yes. So you're 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 sleeping and waking all the time. Yes, anyway. I'm already in the Le Mans 24-hour race. <laughs> no sleep at night, definitely. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, obviously, uh, being a father, it it, it it really boosted me up. Even it boosted me up even more as a driver. My mentality is more stronger now. I know I'm not racing just for myself, but also for my family, my team. So my racing style became, in a way, much more uh, all-rounded. Until before, when I was young, I was really sharp and cut edge driving, but now I think more about the team. And the most important thing is you finish the races. You can be two, three stands faster, but if you're risking and to crashing, there's no point. So it's important in GT racing to maybe back off two or three percent, but to, to manage your tires, to manage the car, and, and then bring the car back to the, back to, uh, to the pits. And, and pass it on to your next driver. So your, your longest ra race to date was how long? Four hours? Now we did a 10-hour race in Suzuka, which we are still considering this year, this 10-hour race in Suzuka in August. This is one of the biggest race GT races in the world because all the manufacturers from the world are coming. Big prize money also involved, which attracts the European teams to come over. So we are still in negotiations, um, but um, that is really one tough race apart from Le Mans 24 hours. OK, thanks. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the floor? Yeah, please. え、日本語オッケー。はい、じゃあマイクで。え、すみません、共同通信の長井と申します。木村さんにお伺いしたいんですけれども、えっと、このチームはルマンではどのカテゴリーで走ることになるんでしょうか。GT uh, uh, racing in Le Mans, and uh, Kim Rao-san answered uh, GT Ama. 
約18台が参戦します。ロモ。So obviously, this is a, a, an exceedingly difficult、uh, race,、um, probably、uh, the most difficult out there, this type of race.、Um, for you personally,、um, as a driver, what is the most challenging aspect of this? Driver, to s t e a あんまりないですね。あのお金の方が大変ですね。<笑> As a driver, really, there is not that much of a、uh, challenge or difficulty, but I,、uh, I worry about money. まあちょっと素直すぎるかもしれないんですけど、まああの彼が走るスピードレンジと私が走るスピードレンジってやっぱり若干まあそうですね、2秒2秒ぐらい違うかルマンでね。えー、なので、まあ、私はしっかりと安全にミスを犯さずにその、まあ、周回を重ねるとそういう意味ではその、まあ、当然大変ですけれどもプロほどの,その極限の状態じゃないので、まあ、そこをしっかりとコミットさせてあげるというのが私の仕事だと思っています、まあ、お金の方が大変ですね頑張ります。<笑> Well,、uh, maybe that was、uh, too straightforward of an answer, but、uh, as far as、uh, our racing is concerned, though,、uh, speed range is differs by two seconds, I believe, between Kay and myself. And、uh, I believe it's because he's a professional driver, and I、uh, have the,、um, well, as、uh, I, I focus on not making any mistake. And、uh, I don't have to worry so much about speed as much as the professional does. And I just make sure that I make the round without making、uh, mistakes. And I'm worried still, concerned about money. That's the biggest challenge.、Um, my perspective is to not collide with other cars.、Um, obviously, the money, if you do. <laughs> But、um, in Le Mans, you have prototypes LMP1, LMP2. And then you have the GT Pro cars that are much faster. We are the slowest car there. And、um, by the way, to explain to you the regulation, in GTM, you have two professionals, and it's mandatory to have one gentleman driver. Okay? So, therefore, obviously, the gentleman needs to be fast. That is the key to winning、uh, the GTM class. The gentleman needs to be fast. Between professionals, there's not much of a difference. Maybe per lap, two tenths, three tenths, it's, which is nothing. The key is. To, make, to have a fast gentleman. So that's why I really committed myself to really train Mr. Kimura because he is the key. And he needs to do minimum six hours. That's rule wise, we need to do six hours. So six hours, if, you, if you're consistent, is, is very important to win. But、um, as a professional, like I said before, you need to pass the car to your next stint, to your next driver. So in Le Mans, since you are the fastest car,、uh, the slowest car, you're looking more behind. Than the front. And you actually have a, a monitor, a back monitor on your cockpit, and then you have two mirrors. And I would say 70, 80% of the time you're looking at those mirrors and those monitors. So, and you're, you're using your peripheral vision to really judge where you're going. And it's really tough, especially in the night, because you have only headlights. So, that is the most difficult aspect in the m o n i t Thank you. Um, have you tested Le Mans yet?、Uh, we are going in June 2nd.、Yeah. It's a mandatory test day. And since it's our first time to go there,、um, we have, there are certain qualifications we have to do. We need to qualify, we need to do at least 10 laps during the night. And then before that, they actually make you do a simulator session in a facility in Paris. And they need to qualify for that. So they give you, a, in a way, a sort of a, a certification license to race in Le Mans before. And then you go into the race week.、Okay. Uh, Monisha, if you could、uh, explain a bit about creating teams and maybe give us an overview of how motorsport is doing in, around the world at the moment、uh, with, your, with your knowledge. But also, you know, how do you. 
feel about teaming up with Kimura-san and, and Kagai? And how difficult is it to create a team from nothing, as, as he has done? Oh, it's uh, it's very difficult because um, today to to create a team, you you need much more than just the passion, because motor racing is is by the nature of the activity, you know, very emotional. It's about speed. Um, it's about uh, a lot of feelings a driver, you know, really goes through to learn to control all that, uh, to to understand your whole environment around you, because it's not like, you know, other speed sports, like if you take skiing as an example, you're pretty much on your own over there and you're not bothering about other cars coming and all that. So this is one side which is very important, but equally, if not more important, and you see it the higher you go in motorsports, sports series is the financial aspect of it because with all the passion you might have all the talent you might have you need to have a solid team and a solid basis and there I think already starting from the lowest categories going right to the top the stable the more stable you are on the financial side the better is your basis to be able to show what you want to do and the as it has been said before, when you once achieve your target, you always want to take the next step. You don't stagnate over there. And this is what Kimura-san also mentioned earlier, meaning the financial side. You know, it, it is a key factor, like in most of the things in life. So that's, those are the two key elements when you create a team. And I think um, people like Kimura-san who create a team in today's world should receive so much of respect from the sporting, you know, from the sporting world, not the business side only of it, because it takes a lot of courage to do this today. And if you look even in Formula One, how those teams were created, how many have been created in the last 30 years, and how many of them are there today. You know, and, and they started with a very different surrounding also on the commercial side. So it is, it is highly commendable of someone today to even take this kind of a, a step, it is, it is in a way always a pioneering step to, or to go have your own team, to have these kind of high targets. And like I said before, reaching a level where you can take part at Le Mans, this is not just any race. I mean, this is so decisive in your team's career that you then take the next step. And that we will see where it, where it goes to because you want to be successful, you want to be always the top of your category, so every step is taken like in a good business in a very prudent fashion. And that's the secret to always getting ahead. Thank you. Uh, Monica, could you also... <coughs> yeah, well, when I was young, I, I grew up following motorsport and, and Le Mans was always one of the the most important dates on the calendar. But I think in Japan, maybe, maybe Kei, you can also answer this too. In Japan, it's kind of less known or maybe people don't quite appreciate how important it really is. Uh, it's a huge event, I'm not just in France, but for Europe. It's, it's a huge event. It is not uh, like Formula One races, just confined to a Friday for the public now, Friday, a Saturday, and the Sunday. It is a much longer period and there's an enormous fan engagement there. Yes. And it's it's for coming from Formula One, you know, we are used to a very different way of working, but we are seeing more and more the problems the sport is facing, particularly with fan engagement. And that's something where I think you can only envy that kind of a sport, that it has so many different categories. It is so challenging because to race for 24 hours, you don't have, let's say, the usual um, the usual uh, comp competitive uh, requirements you need to meet, which is you always want to get your car back home and you don't want it to be damaged and you don't want to collide and all that. But you're doing this for 24 hours. You know, it's not like another race which maybe goes for two hours or so. And that's the extra key challenge in generally in endurance racing, which in, in my view makes it even more difficult because there are so many other aspects. It's about the durability of your parts. It's your whole different driving style. It's a much longer strategy than just, just you know, thinking for two hours what you do. And all this transpires very well 
towards the fan. And that also explains why you have hundreds of thousands of fans coming there. They are part of uh, the, the weighing of the car and you know, knowing the drivers, you're going through the town there. And they create such a great emotional environment. So it's a very special event for that reason. Thank you. Okay, you want to yes. contribute? Um, I believe that you compare motorsports with football, for example. Look at the venues they do the sport. You know, footballs have stadiums in cities, so it's easier for you know people to have access. But mostly, the race tracks are you know in the mountainside, the countryside. It's it's quite logistically more challenging compared to other sports. So I think this is one of the, in a way, a problem, an aspect. So, but if you look at Formula E or you look at some of the races in Europe, like Monte Carlo, it's absolutely not true. It's not, I mean, the sport is recognized globally. It's a, it's a very important sport and people love it, love race cars. Who doesn't, you know, the speed? So I believe in Japan, um, if you look at Super GT races, they have about 50 to 80,000 spectators, which is not bad. It's about a full st uh, stadium, you know, uh, number. So. But yes, obviously, uh, it's it's difficult when it's so far away from the city. So hopefully, we uh, we can have a Grand Prix in Tokyo, and you will see how again the I think the popularity of the sport will rise. Yeah. Um, when you started the team, what were your initial ambitions, and what are your ambitions now? Your goals. そして今は何でしょうか。Well, I've uh, started this uh, uh, sports. Well, motor sports, as you notice, there is motor in front of sports. その意味を考えました。And I thought of what that means. たどり着いたのは え、ま、ゴルフとかテニスとかま、フィギュアスケートとかそういったスポーツの世界選手権にこの私が出ることは絶対にありえないと思いました。え、what あれば、え、ビジネスで成功すれば、この席に立てるんじゃないかな、ま、ルマンに行けるんじゃないかなというその、ある種の、ま、望みがあったので挑戦しました。And uh well, I thought, well, with uh if I succeed with business and I still have chance to compete uh globally or as with as a top group for Le Mans, and that was what I had a hope for that. え、よくモータースポーツはとても大変お金がかかると言われており、それはその通りだと思います。しかしながら、え、それをクリアすれば私のようなビジネスマンもその世界のトップドライバーと同じサーキットで同じ時間を共有できるというのは他のスポーツでは
圧倒的に日本あのに日本の方が多いので日本語でさせていただきます。よろしくお願いいたします。Uh, あのフリーランスあいいですか。<笑> so I'm a freelance uh, journalist and Isakuniko、uh, uh, and there are so many Japanese so I'll be speaking in Japanese. えー、他のスポーツと同じようにあのいかなるあの挑戦者も、えー、体力とそれからあとは精神力、えー、いろんなタイムマネージメントもろもろの,あの規制ですとかあのご自分たちのコントロールをしなくてはいけないと理解しておりますそれはあの、えー、基本的にはこのルマンに関しても自己,自己管理がメインになるんですかそれともやはりあのメサさんのようなプロフェッショナルな何かこう栄養面ですとか、えー、メンタルそれからフィジカルの何かこうメインテンしていくそういうプロの方がチームを組んでいらっしゃるのかこれをそれぞれにお伺いしたいと思いますこととそれから今日私の,あのパートナーとあの話してたんですが今回の、えー、ライバルはどこでしょう挑戦において今回のこの2つお願いいたします。Uh, my question is that、um, with uh, uh, any sports you need physical ability and your mental, mental ability and you have to understand all the rules and regulations. And、um, with Lumine, are you, in,、uh, besides the self management, do you have a team of professional? Um, uh, dietitians and, and、uh, those professionals who will help with the men mental side of it.、Uh, do you have a team of that? And then, number two question is that、uh, what are the uh, uh, what you want to achieve and what,、uh, what are these aspects on the Lumon as well? Okay,、um, physical wise. Sorry,、um, the question was in Japanese. Can you answer in Japanese? So, this is my. あのモニシャさんが来る F1 と我々やってる GT はやっぱ正直全然体力面は違ってですねやっぱ F1 はものすごい体力的にきついですそれはやっぱり一つのコーナーで 5G とか 6G っていうまあものすごい G ダウンホースあので発生する G 量 G があるのでもうドライバーはもう日々あの首を鍛えて有酸素運動をしますねただ GT カーはまだ F1 ほどのスピードがないので実はそこまで体力的にはきつくないですしまあ僕みたいにフォーミュラーから来てるドライバーはもうそこの基礎代謝はできてるのでまあ先ほどあの話したようにやっぱ脱水症状とかが一番の問題ですね特にあの我々がやってたアジアンルマンはえ東南アジアでレースしてたのでもう本当に日本の灼熱の暑さと全く同じようでですねまあエアコンがついてるんですけどあの市販車ほどのエアコンではないですし、しかも我々あの耐火スーツ、アンダーウェア、しかもそれも耐火なんで、そのダブルに着て、さらにフェイスマスク、ヘルメットをかぶって、もうほとんどその着てる状態でも居心地は悪いのに、まあ、レーシングカーを全開で走らせなきゃいけなくて、その暑さがあるということなんで、そこの辺の管理というのが、管理というか、そこは本当にもう慣れというか、まあ、根性でもあるし、あとはやっぱとにかくその水ですよね、水と栄養スポーツドリンクをたくさん飲むこと。が、えー、非常に大事です。Okay. もう一つ何でしたっけ？質問。Uh, can I, can I oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> あの、uh, well as、uh, where Manisha comes from, F1 and GT is very different.、Uh, F1 physically it's so difficult because you have so much of uh, 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 5G, 6G, which is a lot of uh, gravity uh, associated, and you have to really train your or、um, your neck to become strong, strong, and then you have to、uh, constantly send oxygen to your body. But with GT, it's not so physically difficult, but then you have to fight against、um, dehydration. And、uh, we have raced in、um, Southeast Asia, which was really,、um, really extremely hot as it is in ja Japan during the summertime. And it does have air conditioner, but、uh, you have to wear the suit and underwear and everything. You have to wear a face mask, helmet, and you're completely uncomfortable with these clothing, and then you, you have to drive on top of that. So, you know, it's,、um, yes, you have to do self management, yes, but you have to really get used to it, and you just have the guts to、uh, make it through all this. And,、uh, well, it's, it's mainly a lot of、uh, drink, a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. I think it's a lot of water, sports drinks. まあ、あの市販で販売されていない、まあ、そのプロトタイプな車なんですね
、でまあ、本当にその車っていうのは、ポルシェはルマネ勝つために作ってきた車で、まあ、昨年、GT プロと GT アマで、圧倒的な速さをお見せつけて、えー、まあ勝ってます。であの実はですね、まあ、その GT レースでは、あの性能調整っていうのがあるんですね、あのいろんなメー自動車メーカーが車を作ったときに、やっぱりその巣の状態で走らせると、どっちかが特化してしまうことを恐れるために、その世界自動車連盟がですねみんなをイコールにしようといって、その性能調整っていうのをこう使います。なので、まあ、その性能調整がどういう調整になるかっていうのは実はル・マンの1週間前じゃないと出ないのでまずそこに注目がついてくると思うんですが、まあ、昨年、ポルシェがもう圧倒的に勝ってるんで、まあ、フェラーリ陣営としては今年はちょっと有利なんじゃないかなと。言ってますあごめんなさい、通訳ありました。Sorry.、Uh, well, as you asked about who are rivalists, and it is really so clear, it's Porsche. And、uh, RSR, they are building this prototype, which is only、uh, specifically to win in Le Mans. And、uh, they, they're just so strong, and last year they're,、uh, they're、uh, at the top. And there's GT Pro and GT、uh, Amateur. And、uh, with、uh, GT, there is this thing that's called、uh, um, adjustments or equalizing adjustment. And、uh, when you just、uh, go head to head with the way they are,、um, it is、uh, unfair. So they are doing this、uh, equalizing adjustments to make it equal、uh, for different、uh, cars or teams to participate. But this Adjustments,、uh, what they need to do is only announced one week before the Le Mans、uh, race. And,、uh, but we feel that because Porsche was so strong,、uh, it will be、um, more、uh, beneficial for our side with uh, this uh, uh, adjustments that we need to make. If I can add on,、uh, the adjustment is called officially balance of performance、Thank、or、you. BOP. So, yeah, we will, BOP is the word.、Yeah. Thank you.、Uh, あもう一つ私の方、えー、だいたい心拍数が走行中は、えー、160から190ぐらいおそらく160に下がると抜かれちゃうんですねなので、えー、心拍数を高めながら頭は冷静でいなくちゃいけないというのはすごく難しいです通常のスポーツは心拍数を高めて興奮すれば力が発揮できるんですけれどもレーシングドライバーは、えー、心拍数は高いんですけれども興奮してるんですけれども頭はクールじゃないといけないんですねとってもその見,見た目をこう走行を見てるとすごく激しく走ってるようですけど実は私らドライバーはそのものすごくミリ単位で車を丁寧に本当に丁寧にあの操作をしてます、えー、なのでえー、そこのコントロールがすごく難しいと、早く走らないといけないんだけれども、ブレーキを踏む、ちょっと珍しいスポーツですね、早,い早く走らせたいんだけれど、止めないといけないというスポーツなので、そこら辺のメンタリティーがすごく大事ですね、あと、私の中のライバルは当然、ポルシェはチームとしてはそうですけれども、フェラーリが約8台ぐらい、同じフェラーリでも出てきますので、やはりフェラーリチームにはあー同じ車なので、えー、絶対負けたくないと思っております。Okay, well,、uh, I want to add on that、um, what is the difficult aspect of ra racing. With、uh, racing, you have to keep your heart rate between 160 and 90. If you go under 160, you will not be able to perform and you will lose. But unlike other sports, which means that if you have such hard, hard, high heart rate, you just get all excited and you just push through. But the、uh, drivers have to keep their heads cool and be calculating、uh, everything. So、um, a race driver has to be、uh, controlling, and we have to control everything by millimeter、um, uh, units. So that we have to control the units, yet have, be excited、uh, in physically so that、uh, heart rate will stay、um, at the high rate. And we have to really control our feeling that we want to go faster, but we have to have the, a strong mentality to be able to、uh, break or slow down at any time. And as far as a rival is concerned, yes, Porsche is a rival too, but there are eight other teams and Ferrari as well. And I absolutely do not want to lose against other Ferrari. Thank you. Yes, please. こんにち
ちはポルシェマガジン正解でございます3つありますえっと1つは、えー、今度のルマンでゼッケンワークスゼッケン52番とワークスカーが提供されるというふうに伺っておりますが当初の予定では GT3 マシンをバージョンアップするというふうに伺っておりましたこれがワークスカーに変化したのはやはりアジアンルマン4連勝という完勝したということの評価だったんでしょうかあ,あ、えっ、ー、と一つずつの方がいいです。じゃあ,じゃあ終わったら読んでください。ケイさん、I'm losing this.、Uh, yeah, okay. This, I'll translate if you want. <laughs> or, or rather, that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah,、um, what he what he asked is、um, obviously、uh, this year we have been provided the number 52 car from Ferrari, so we're actually renting a Ferrari from a from the Ferrari Works car, and he asked, you know, having won. Four races in a row in Asian Le Mans. Does that, did that give, influence the Ferrari organization to give one of their best cars to our team?、Mm -hmm. You want to answer? I'm going to answer. Ferrari, no, Ferrari, no, 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 正式には言われてないです。ただこの車を提供する意味を分かってくれと言われてます。はい。Well,、えー、そうだけです。Uh, well, Ferrari、um, has provided works car for us. I think it is uh, actually um, uh, not exactly uh, uh, that that much of a, it's a lot of pressure for us because、uh, it's not official. But it is, they're saying to us, you better understand what it means for us to provide this car to you. さまざまな企業からスポンサーのオファーがあったかと思うんですがもう決まったところあるんでしょうか Well,、uh, question number two is that uh, um, uh, unlike the Japanese races、uh, with Le Mans,、uh, the moment that you are、uh, officially participating, European、uh, sponsor will come around. Do you have a sponsor? Eh, ma, now, 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 n o そしてあるパートナーシップはかなり世界中ですねそれこそ地の果てまで響き渡るような方とおそらくパートナーシップを組むと思いますのでまもなく発表になると思いますその方も私どものそして私のレーシング魂というかビジネスとレースをやるこのスピリットにすごく共感してパートナーシップ組みたいと言って直接メールいただきました、えー、今日ちょっと今ここで言えないのは申し訳ないんですけどそれは近々楽しみにしておいてください。Well, uh, actually we are about to sign a, a big、uh, sponsorship contract but I'm sorry to say I cannot tell you at this time、uh, it is a, um, a big company or well-known global company that end of the world anybody in the world will know the name And uh, this, uh, this person has really、um, was excited and, and understood my racing spirit and my business spirit. And uh, uh, I have received the email directly from this person, and it will be announced very soon. Eh, to Ferrari, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm I'm sure I'm I'm sure I'm sure i Well, you may do Ferrari this year and maybe even next year. Will you have a, will you consider or, or is there a chance for you to come back to Ferrari? Porsche.、Uh, Porsche, excuse me. I have a Porsche, but I have a Porsche. I have a Royal customer, so I have a Porsche. I have a Porsche, but I have a Porsche. I have a Porsche. <laughs> well, I actually own a、uh, four or five、uh, Porsche, and I am at the rank of a Royal、um, Porsche customer. And so, having said that, that means,、uh, yeah, and when、uh, one of these days I might, but for now, I am a Ferrari. Any more questions from the floor? <laughs> Thank you. 
あどうも TBS テレビのビビットですちょっと木村さんにお伺いしたいんですけどもえっとまあ今回ご自身が目標とされているルマン参戦ということでまあそれの見込みと、えー、もう一つあのまあ今回ご自身の目標とされているルマン参戦が叶ったということなんですけども、まあ、次なる将来の目標を教えていただけたらと思います。Um, Kimura with、uh, TBS TV, and I'd like to ask a question to、uh, Kimura san. What is your、um, uh, feeling or your re、uh, really spirit going into this Le Mans? And once you are to achieve this、uh, objective of winning, if you are to, to achieve it, what is your next goal? Hi, y e a ヨーロッパでは日本のモータースポーツというのはかなりいい、まあ、注目というか、まあ、低く見られていますなので私は日本人なので、えー、彼らを一泡吹かせたいと本当に思ってまして、えーまあ、初参戦ですけども優勝を目指したいと思いますそして、えー、将来のビジョンとしてはあのー、2020年以降ハイパーカーというクラスが設定されますのでそれはあのクラスの中の最上級クラスになりますのでそちらをケイト、主に社女子とですね組んで将来的に挑んでいきたいと思っております。Okay. Well, um... In Europe, Japan is seen as underdog, not、um, that very good. And I am going to, for the championship, I want to、uh, win, win the first place and just show them what we can do. And as far as、uh, my future goal is concerned,、uh, there is that vision 2020.、Uh, there will be hypercar class, which will be the highest in the class of uh, these uh, uh, racing or the cars. And、uh, myself, Kay, and Manisha,、uh, we are going to uh, uh, work on this to achieve something great. Okay, any more questions?、Uh, just finally,、uh, Manisha. Uh, you have a lot of experience in, in motor racing. How do you see the future of motor racing from now? I mean, you, you may be getting involved with Car Guy,、uh, but in general, I mean, we have Formula E, and Formula One has some successes, some failures, which we talked about before, like India and Korea pulled out of the、uh, F1 calendar. What's your vision of the future for, for motorsports? Well, that's not so easy to answer given the limited time we have now.、Um, motorsport you know, consists of so many series. You know, a lot of people just focus maybe on Formula One because it is, they call, or we like to call it, the pinnacle of motorsport, but there's so much else to it. Where so many fans are also, companies are involved, they're all over the world. So、um, it's very difficult to say you know, in what way motorsport will be going. The fact is, like also Kay has said,、um, you will always have an interest in fast cars. And if you look at it statistically, every kid at home has a football and a car to play with. No matter girl or boy. So the interest will always be there.、Um, to say where motorsport will go, I think this interest will always be present, and hopefully in the next generations and so on to come. You then have to, of course, look at the different categories, and whenever you go to the highest category, may it be like in endurance racing, like they're planning to bring the hypercars in, or if you look at, at Formula One. As the highest category in, in the motorsport series,、uh, also regulated by the FIA. I think the most important will be to adapt to the changes society is undergoing now. It's,、uh, you always have to get the attention of the younger crowds because they are. Tomorrow's people who will consume the goods, that's why companies come in there, who will buy the tickets to the races and create that interest for the sport. So it's always the highest category. And the challenge lies in how do you engage with them? You know, it, it's no longer enough if we all think back that we,、uh, as 
kids went with our parents to a race and found that very exciting. Today's young generation is far more driven by technological innovation, their access to electronic gadgets is very different. And this transformation which has taken place in the outside world has to now be reflected in motorsport. And I think the, share, the, the, the shareholders and the, the right holders in Formula One, for example, are looking at this equally in, in the endurance championship. Um, so you'll have to find different ways to adapt the show, to make the technology more accessible, to have that connectivity to your fans and the people. Thank you. Okay, we're uh, out of time if there's no more questions. Uh, we will have to bring this to a halt. I want to thank our translator today, today Fujiko Suda, and of course our guests, Takeshi Kimura, Kei Kosolino, and Monisha Kaltenborn for coming today and giving us a very informative uh, press conference. Thank you very much. We're done. Thank you.